on November 17, 2021, Brian Vlada Castle, a 22-year-old beloved son and brother, was reported missing to the Orange County Sheriff's Office in Orlando, Florida. His father had been on vacation out of state and upon returning home discovered that Vladek was missing. An investigation revealed that the last time Vladek was verifiably seen was on the morning of November 6th. Since his disappearance, there have been no other confirmed sightings of him, leaving his family distraught and desperate for answers. It's been over two years since Vladek went missing and investigators are still searching for him. Hey everyone, welcome back to Detective Perspective. My name is Derek Lavasser. I'm a licensed private investigator and former police detective, and each week I'll be covering an unsolved case in story format. I'll then give you my perspective on the investigation and provide contact information for the individuals or organizations connected to the case so that if you have any tips, you can contact them directly and maybe you can help solve a case. And if you're someone who's interested in true crime, specifically unsolved cases, and you would like to hear my opinion on those investigations, please consider subscribing whether you're watching here on YouTube or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever platform you use. All right, so Vlada Castle, this case is filled with mystery. You have a 22-year-old young man who was left home uh, by his family, and why not? He's 22 years old, and he just disappears without a trace. And it's scary. It's scary to think that this can happen. This case is not that old. So to have a situation where only two years ago in the world we live in today with cell phones and cameras on every street corner, to have someone just vanish like this, it's highly unlikely. Uh, I don't want to go as far as saying that there's definitely some something criminal occurring here, but that's where my head immediately goes to. Again, with the society we live in now where Everyone has a, a video camera right in their pocket at all times. It's hard to believe that even if you wanted to, you could just disappear without any type of electronic data being transmitted or GPS coordinates or being caught on a camera that you didn't want to be caught on, just something. But we'll go over the case, and then after you have all the details, I'll give my opinion at the end, and you can figure out where you fall as well. So with that all out of the way, let's dive into this week's case. Vladek Hassel, also known as Vlad, was born on December 20th, 1998 in Russia. He and his older sister Irina lived in a Moscow orphanage until they were adopted in 2004 by Steve and Cheryl Hassel, a couple from Florida. The Hassels had eight children, with many already grown up and out of the house. And actually, Bethany and Jody, two of the Hassel children, helped us put this episode together, so a big thank you to them. Vladek and Irina quickly settled into their new life in the United States. Vladek was given the American name Brian, but he still went by Vladek or Vlad. He and Irina learned English quickly and lost their Russian accents. They never returned to Russia, and Vladek had since forgotten how to even speak Russian. During middle school, Vladek's parents separated, and he ended up living with his dad Steve, although he remained close with his mom as well. After graduating from high school in the late 2010s, Vladek lived in different cities, including Arlington, Texas, San Diego, California, Detroit, Michigan, and Nashua, New Hampshire. He also followed his lifelong dream of joining the Marines. But then, in the summer of 2020, Vladek made the decision to leave the Marines after realizing it wasn't the right fit for him. He moved back to Orlando, Florida to live with his dad. Once there, Vladek struggled with his mental health. The Marines had been his lifelong dream, and when that path didn't work out, he didn't know what his purpose was. So he continued to live with Steve while he figured it all out. In November of 2020, Steve and Vladek moved into the place at Alafea, an apartment complex in Orlando near the University of Central Florida's campus. Vladek enjoyed living there, and in the evenings, he would often go into the woods behind the complex's basketball court to hang out. During these trips to the woods, Vladek would smile and strike up conversations with anyone he encountered along the way. 
When his sisters later found out about this, they weren't surprised at all. They described Vladek as, quote, the friendliest person you'll ever meet. He was always interested in hearing people's stories. While living at the apartment complex, Vladek became a regular at the Foxtail Coffee Shop located about a mile away on University Boulevard in Collegiate Way. He visited the coffee shop up to three times a week, spending multiple hours there every time he went. Vladek seemed to be settling into his new apartment, but then, in early 2021, his family noticed a change in him. He started listening to a YouTube pastor who talked a lot about heaven, archangels, and demons. After watching these videos, Vladek would tell his family how he felt ready to go to heaven. Sometimes he would say things like, quote, what's the point if we can just be in heaven? Understandably, his family found this concerning. Vladek also began rejecting material possessions, something he had never done before. He gave away his tablet and broke his phone, telling Steve he did so because it was distracting him. Vladek also didn't want to get a new phone to replace the one he had just broken, but Steve and Vlad's sister Irina insisted that at least he carry a flip phone so people could reach him if they had to. Vladek followed through and got a flip phone with a new number that could only be used for calls and texts, but he didn't always carry the phone with him. Around the same time, Vladek also became heavily involved in helping the unsheltered community in East Orlando. News Nation reported that this gave Vladek a sense of purpose. He loved bringing them food and spending time getting to know them. He would even take some people to dinner and movies. And on one occasion, he let a couple use his credit card. However, they ended up taking advantage of his kindness. Then in the summer of 2021, Vladek started talking about his desire to hike up the Appalachian Trail. At this time, Steve was thinking about renting a four-bedroom house with rooms for Vladek, Jody, and Bethany in Orlando. But when Steve brought this up to Vladek, he mentioned that he didn't need a room, he would just camp outside to get ready for hiking the trail. A few months later, in September, the Hassel family began planning a trip to Tennessee to celebrate Bethany's birthday. When she and Vladek discussed the trip, which was scheduled for November 5th through the 16th, Vladek mentioned how he planned to hike the Appalachian Trail, and then he would meet them there. Bethany didn't take Vladek too seriously. She thought the hiking trail had always seemed more like a far-fetched idea. Vlad had often made big statements just to gauge people's reactions. Despite not taking Vladek seriously, Bethany told him to keep his phone on and to check in if he decided to do the hike. Vladek brushed her off, saying he'd be fine. As the November trip to Tennessee approached, Vladek informed his family that he didn't want to go with them. At the time, this didn't concern anyone because Vladek was known to keep to himself. On November 3rd, two days before the trip, Vladek and Steve's car broke down while Vladek was driving around Orlando. He walked home and Steve called for a tow truck to take the vehicle to the shop. The car would have to stay there until Steve returned from his Tennessee trip on the 16th. This meant that Vladek wouldn't have a car while Steve was away, but he was fine with that. He could just walk or take the bus. That same day, Vladek purchased a $60 pocket knife, and when Steve asked why, Vladek said it was for protection, but they really didn't discuss it any further. The next night, November 4th, Vladek became hyper-focused on religion, talking to Steve about archangels and demons, and mentioning something about, quote, you have to be dark to kill the dark. Steve found this confusing and wondered if Vladek had heard it from the pastor on YouTube. Steve was concerned, so he called Jody and said Vladek wasn't making a lot of sense. Jody suggested having a wellness check done, but Steve doubted it would help since Vladek would most likely know how to downplay any concerns. That same night, Vladek called an acquaintance and asked if he could stay on his couch for a night or two, but the acquaintance said no. Despite this awkward interaction, Vladek seemed upbeat and energetic during the call. He mentioned that for the past few months, he wanted to go on a pilgrimage and preach the Bible, but now he wanted to sing instead. The following morning, November 5th, Steve gave Vladek $100 in cash and a credit card before he left for Tennessee. He also offered to buy groceries, but Vladek said there was enough food at home. Steve further mentioned that he was expecting a package to arrive on the 8th and asked Vladek to bring it inside, and Vladek promised to do so. In the afternoon, Steve left for Tennessee, still worried about Vladek and his current state of mind. Late that night, Vladek called his sister Irina, and she described the call as a typical chat where they checked in on each other. However, Irina didn't hear from Vladek again, which was unusual because they were very close and usually talked every day. 
Meanwhile, Steve reached out to Vladek multiple times from Tennessee using both text and voicemail, but Vladek didn't respond to any messages from Steve or the rest of the family that was on the trip. They weren't initially worried because Vladek often didn't keep his phone on him, so it wasn't unusual for him not to answer. On November 15th, Steve came back from the trip a day earlier than expected. After picking the car up from the shop, he arrived at home to find the package he had ordered still outside of the apartment. This struck him as odd since Vladek had promised to bring it inside. Steve also noticed that the kitchen looked untouched, with no food missing from the fridge and no dirty dishes in sight. It seemed like Vladen hadn't been staying at the apartment at all. Steve then went to Vladek's room to check there, and that's when he found Vladek's flip phone with unread text and missed calls dating back to the afternoon of November 6th. In addition to finding Vladek's phone, Steve also located the recently purchased pocket knife, but I want to note that Vladek's wallet and his bank cards were gone. Alright, we're going to continue on with this case, but before we do, let's hear from this week's sponsor, Factor. I'm on the go all the time, but I'm always trying to stay healthy and in good shape because unfortunately, I'm not getting any younger. So I started researching a healthy pre-made option about a year ago, and that's when I found Factor, and I've been using them ever since. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there's more than 60 add-on meals to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. In addition to the meals you might expect like chicken and steak, Factor also has pancakes, smoothies, and much more. And you can discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast midday bites. And listen, you guys know how I feel about the breakfast midday bites. I do the bacon and cheddar and the kale and mushroom all the time, probably once or twice a week. They're quick, they're easy, they're delicious. And a little added benefit that I didn't mention at the beginning, yes, Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, there's no cooking, but there's also no cleanup. No dishes, Derek approved. And Factor is flexible for your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week, plus you can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. And by signing up for Factor, you save money. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So if you like what you're hearing, head on over to factormeals.com slash detective50 and use my code detective50 to get 50% off. That's code detective50 at factormeals.com slash detective50 to get 50% off. I want to thank Factor for sponsoring this week's episode. If you want to support me, make sure you support them. Let's get back to the case. All right, so before the ad, I had just mentioned that Steve located Vladek's phone and his recently purchased pocket knife. However, his wallet and bank cards were missing. And obviously, Steve was worried about Vladek, but decided not to report him missing right away. He thought that maybe Vladek was waiting for him to return home on the 16th, However, when Vladek didn't show up or contact anyone on the 16th, Steve and his family grew even more concerned. On the 17th, Steve and Bethany went to the sheriff's office to file a missing persons report. They also made flyers with Steve's phone number and put them up around the area to spread the word. A maintenance man from the apartment complex responded to one of the flyers and left Steve a message. He said that he had seen Vladek, quote, last Friday and stopped to chat with him briefly. The man mentioned that Vladek liked to smoke and sing in the woods behind the basketball court, so the family should check there. Now, it should be noted that it wasn't clear if, quote, last Friday meant November 12th or November 5th, but Steve and his family believed it was likely November 5th based on the package that was left outside of the home on November 8th. After hearing this information, Bethany asked the place of Alifea for surveillance footage. Now, unfortunately, they only had footage from the past seven days and any older footage had already been erased. Bethany then asked the police to gather surveillance footage from the places Vladek was known to frequent, but the police officers felt that reviewing all of that footage would be too overwhelming, and most of it was probably already deleted anyway. Determined to follow up on the maintenance man's tip, Bethany and Steve searched the woods behind the basketball court. These woods are dense, but not very big. 
However, the area is extremely overgrown with lots of trees, palmetto bushes, and swampy wetlands. Because of this, Bethany and Steve only made it about 30 feet before they couldn't go any further. On November 19th, the police tried to search the woods as well, but it was raining, making the search even more difficult. They were only able to make it as far as Steve and Bethany, so they brought in helicopters and drones with thermal cameras as well as a canine search dog, but unfortunately, they didn't find Vladek anywhere. However, they did find a possible sign of him. According to Fox 35 News, officers located a red slide sandal along the tree line of the apartment complex. They showed Steve a picture of the shoe, and he said it looked like the kind of shoes that Vladek wears, but he couldn't remember if Vladek had red ones. The shoe was sent off for DNA testing to figure out if it did in fact belong to Vladek. While waiting for the results, police officers continued their search, distributing flyers in the homeless shelters and the University Boulevard Alafaya Trail area. Additionally, they went door to door in the neighborhood to talk to residents. During this canvas, they found a witness who happened to be a friend of Vladek's. The friend said Vladek showed up at his apartment around 3 a.m. on Monday, November 15th. Vladek asked if he could stay the night, but the friend said no because his girlfriend and her kids were there. Vladek then asked the friend if he had a gun, but fortunately the friend did not. Vladek seemed pretty anxious to leave, but the friend asked why he needed a gun, and Vladek said it was for protection. The friend then asked Vladek what he needed protection against, and Vladek answered, quote, against an animal. Before leaving, Vladek mentioned that he wanted to go, quote, off the grid. Now, a little bit of a side note here, when we were putting this episode together, we did ask Vladek's sister Bethany about her thoughts on this friend's statement to the police, and she does believe that the tip is credible. However, she's not sure that the date is accurate. Now, as far as the date's concerned, uh, Bethany obviously knows more than I do, but based on just what we have here, depending on how often the friend's girlfriend stayed over with her kids, uh, if that wasn't a common occurrence, more than likely the date is, is pretty accurate or maybe there was something else that registered with the friend to know when this occurred and, and maybe gave them the date of November 15th. However, Bethany is not sure about it. So as you're going forward, we want to acknowledge this tip because I think it's very important, but also keep in mind that maybe the date may be off by a day or two, but even if that's the case, it's, it's still very relevant. Now, the police continued speaking to people, hoping to find Vladek, but they had no luck. And since Vladek was born in Russia, they also looked at the possibility that he returned there. While looking into that angle, they learned that he had no contacts in Russia due to his adoption being closed. They also learned that his passport had expired, making it impossible for him to travel there. But just to be safe, the police made it so that he would get flagged if he tried to get another passport. The police also checked Vlad's bank accounts and found that he had last used his credit card at Foxtail Coffee at around 8 a.m. on November 6th. When they investigated this further, they discovered that shortly after this purchase, Foxtail contacted the sheriff's office to issue a trespass warning against Vladek. Now, to understand why this happened, we need to rewind to November 4th. On that day, a customer complained to staff that Vladek was making him uncomfortable. The customer left right after, so the employees didn't inform Vladek about the complaint. Later, the customer returned and this time reported seeing Vladek sitting outside the coffee shop, placing a pocket knife on the table. Foxtail has a strict no weapons policy, so they decided to issue a trespass warning against Vladek, but by the time this happened, Vladek had already left and was unaware of any issues. Not realizing he was no longer allowed at Foxtail, Vladek returned on the morning of November 6th. He bought a coffee, using his credit card for the last time, and sat down. The coffee shop then called the sheriff's office to issue a trespass warning. When police arrived, they informed him about the trespass warning, which left him visibly confused, as seen in the body cam footage. They didn't explain why he was being trespassed, simply explaining that Foxtail was a private business and they could ask anyone to leave for any reason even if it was just because of the kind of shirt they were wearing. During this interaction, Vladek was very polite, trying to chat with the officer about the weather and how his day was going. However, it was obvious that Vladek didn't understand why he was being trespassed. To him, the coffee shop was like a safe haven and being asked to leave was confusing and hurtful. 
At 8.26 a.m., the officer instructed Vladek not to return to the coffee shop. Vladek calmly walked away towards a nearby Wawa convenience store. The officer's body cam footage became the last confirmed sighting of Vladek before he disappeared. In the footage, Vladek can be seen wearing a black hoodie over a gray shirt with a necklace, khaki shorts, crew-length black socks, and bright red slides. At one point during the interaction, he can be seen emptying his pockets, revealing his credit card, Bank of America debit card, and ID, but not the pocket knife he had been carrying. And it's important to note that none of the items that Vladek had in his pockets have ever been located. In February of 2022, the police met with Steve, Bethany, and Jody to tell them about the body cam footage. After learning about the incident at Foxtail, the whole family seemed even more worried about Vladek. Steve later told News Nation, quote, My first thought was he had a mental breakdown because of what happened with the coffee shop and his level of depression to start with, and that maybe he went off into the woods like he'd one time thought of doing and just stayed there. During the meeting, the police also informed the family that the tests performed on the red slide shoe found at the apartment were inconclusive. However, it was about the same size as Vlad's other shoes and matched the shoes seen on the body cam footage from Foxtail. So the police couldn't confirm definitively that the red slide belonged to Vladek, but it was a very good chance that it did. So the search continued on for Vladek, and in the summer of 2022, a search group called Q scoured the woods near the apartment complex with about 30 search dogs, but they didn't find anything. In the fall, new detectives took over Vlad's case, giving the family renewed hope. They believed there was more information to uncover, so the family also hired private investigator Steve Fisher to follow up on any additional leads, and they wanted to make it clear that he's been a valuable asset to the family, and they're very thankful for his help. Now, unfortunately, there haven't been any new updates in this case. The police, private investigator, and the family continue to follow up on leads in Vlad's investigation. At this point, the family does not know what happened to Vladek. Bethany said, quote, There's one million and one possibilities of what could have happened, but there's no clear direction to look. I do believe someone out there knows what happened. There's so many people that probably have interacted with him that just don't realize that he's a missing person, and the information that they hold could be key to his case. She went on to state, quote, just reaching them is going to be what it takes to really find him. If he's out there okay, doing his own thing, that's great. That's all we need to know. But in my heart of hearts, something is wrong. Vladek has never been without contact with his family. He wouldn't let Irina, his biological sibling, worry for two years. So something's not right. Now, Vladek's family is asking our listeners and viewers to please share his missing persons flyer. Jody said, quote, It might not seem like a huge help, but honestly, that's the only way I'm going to find my brother is by strangers resharing because eventually we'll reach the one person who might know something because without a doubt, he has a memorable personality. All right, so let's dive into this perspective. Uh, this case is a real mystery. And, it, and it's only two years old, and I'm glad that we're covering it when we are because it, it is new, and there's still hope that we could do something to really impact this case. And having Vlad's family on board with this, I really wanted to get it out to you guys as soon as possible. So let's break down some of this case and kind of look at it in a little deeper, different angle. First off, the last verifiable footage that we have is that is that body cam footage from November 6th, 8.30 a.m., and a lot of it, it lines up perfectly because on November 5th, he was at Foxtail Coffee and allegedly this individual who was uncomfortable with him saw him with a pocket knife, which we know that he recently purchased. So more than likely, that's valid. And we know that when, when his father came home, Steve came home, he found the pocket knife in his room. So what that more than likely tells us is sometime between November 5th and the morning of November 6th. Vlad went back to the house, and that's when he left his flip phone and he left his pocket knife. He, he kept a hold of his wallet and his cards, which, again, we see on the body cam footage. What happens after that is the real mystery. Yeah, we know he didn't answer his phone, and we have this red slide that was found in the woods that if I were a betting man, 
uh, I would say exactly what law enforcement is saying. It, it belongs to Vlad. So that does tell us more than likely Vlad went to those woods uh, shortly after this incident. Now, what he went there for and what happened, that's the big question. So let's talk about the different scenarios. The first one is one that I think we all hope didn't happen, but we have to acknowledge the reality that it, it could be the case. As Steve had said, Vlad was in a, a state of mind where he was thinking a little unclearly and, and depressed. And could this situation at the coffee shop where he felt super safe and he enjoyed going and he felt like a, a member of that community by being outcasted, it really could have put him over the edge. And he may have went to the woods, as Steve said, and, and never left those woods. And I'm going to leave it at that. I think you guys know what I'm saying there. However, if that were the case, I would expect to find some evidence of it unless there's a ravine or a river nearby or something where if something did happen to to Vlad, uh, we may never find uh, any remnants of him. I, I, I'm confused by the, the fact that with all these people who've gone in and searched for him almost immediately after and the search team a little bit later, no one has found any other evidence of, of Vlad being in those woods other than that slipper. So could he have gone to the woods and then and then left on his own? Absolutely. Which brings us to the next scenario. Is there a possibility, we know that Vlad liked to be by himself, is there a possibility that this coffee shop incident happens, he goes to the woods to collect himself and while there makes the decision that this is it. That's all he had left and he's leaving Orlando, Florida and he's going on his mission to go preach the Bible or to quote unquote sing as he said, but whatever the case, he's going to just be a transient. He's going to leave the area. He's going to hitchhike. He's going to do what he has to do. And he's going to travel the country preaching the Bible. Could he be still out there right now? As Jody said, uh, engaging and interacting with people on a daily basis. And no one knows that he's a missing person. Absolutely possible. And I think based on what we know right now, I think potentially the most likely scenario with the, the limited information we have from the woods to suggest that something happened there as far as a, something self-inflicted, um, it kind of leaves me wondering, did he walk out of there alive and we just haven't found him yet? Maybe he doesn't want to be found. Maybe he's amongst the thousands of homeless people out there right now where it would be very easy for him to hide without anybody finding him. Now, the only thing with that whole scenario is that we have this friend's witness statement stating that Vlad was looking for a gun uh, to protect himself against an animal. I don't know if I buy that. I think there's a potential that maybe at the time when this occurred, Vlad was going through a tough time. And yeah, maybe he had someone in his circle or in his surroundings that he was in fear of and felt he needed protection from. Or maybe, on the other hand, he was going to use the gun to end his own life. Again, I'm not going to speculate too far. His family, who's going to be watching or listening to this episode, uh, would be able to speak to that much clearer than I could. But from what I've been told and from what we've learned, Vlad was going through some things. So is it completely out of the realm of possibility? No, of course not. It's not. So that could be a potential scenario with the gun involved. But again, he didn't get a gun from the friend, so where would he get a gun? And if he did use a gun for that purpose, we more than likely would have found him by now or, or at minimum found the gun. And the last scenario I want to talk about is the least likely but also still a possible scenario, and I'm sure the PI and law enforcement are, are looking into this as well, but let's play this out. He goes to the coffee shop. This incident occurs. It, it, it shakes him. It throws him off. So he goes into the woods to collect himself. That's where he feels comfortable. He wants to go think about what just happened. And while he's in those woods, there's someone else who encounters him, someone with malicious intentions. Maybe the person, maybe that Vlad had been in fear of this whole time. But whatever the case, there's an altercation or Vlad attempts to flee, losing one of his, his slides. And then unfortunately, this person or, or these people 
are able to get a hold of Vlad and, and something bad happens from there. What that is, I don't know. Could that be a potential scenario based on what Vlad was saying and, and this need for protection and the sandal being left behind? Could that all tie in together where Vlad was taken against his will or he was hurt or potentially killed by someone? Yeah, it's it's a possible scenario. I don't, again, see any evidence to suggest that in the wooded area where you would see some type of injury or some type of struggle, whether that's tree branches being broken or being dragged out of there. But still, even with the lack of evidence, it doesn't mean that you rule it out. It's, it, lack of evidence doesn't count as exculpatory evidence. So I'm, it's still on the table for me. And then if he wasn't hurt or killed there, again, he could have just been rendered unconscious or unable to move and removed from that area. But then the question becomes, if that happened, nobody saw or heard anything. Difficult to imagine, but again, not impossible. So that's really the three scenarios that I see when I look at this case. First scenario, whatever happened to Vlad was, was self-inflicted, and I hope that's not the case. Uh, the second scenario is that he went into the woods and then decided to go on an adventure, take off on his own, which he had said in the past that he was considering doing. Or the third scenario is that when Vlad went into the woods, someone else was already there or someone was was following behind him and and something happened from that point. I'm really hoping for scenario number two. I believe that Vlad's family is hoping for the same. And maybe with this case, somebody out there is going to hear something uh, or see something that triggers a memory of an of a person that they have encountered in the last two years that resembles Vladik. And it fits the bill of what we're talking about tonight. Maybe he's out there preaching religion. If this is someone that sounds familiar or looks familiar to you, please report this. So ending this episode, I want to recap what we've talked about tonight. Brian Vladek Hassel was last verifiably seen on November 6, 2021 at around 8.30 a.m. at Foxtail Coffee on University Boulevard and Collegiate Way in Orlando, Florida. Vladek is 5'8", white, with blondish brown hair and blue eyes. If you have any information that could lead to the discovery of Vladek, please reach out to the Orange County Sheriff's Office Missing Persons Unit at 407-254-7000. To keep up to date with Vladek's case, visit Find Vladek Hassel on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and TikTok. I want to thank Vladek's family for allowing me to cover this case and for participating in the creation of the script that you guys heard tonight. Uh, I know this isn't easy to do, but I, I love the fact that you're taking the initiative and staying positive and allowing uh, podcasts and YouTube channels like myself to, to help in any way we can. Because I agree with you, Jody, that it's going to take one person out there who's going to reach the individual who knows something and holds the key to this case, and maybe they don't even know it yet. So we will be here to support you, I'm sure. I'm absolutely positive that everyone associated with Detective Perspective and even Crime Weekly, all the, the forums we have, will be sharing Vladek's information, and I'm really hoping for positive news in this case. That's going to do it for me, guys. Everyone stay safe out there, and I will see you next week.